My name is Christian Schaefer. I'm an outdoor adventure photographer and I've been living on the road for just over three years now. First I lived in my SUV for 14 months and then two years ago I bought this van brand new as an empty cargo van and hired a team to build it out. So for two years now I've been living in this van full time along with some Airbnbs and house sits. But otherwise, this has been my primary residence. In two years, I've put just over 29,000 miles on it. I've spent most of that time traveling throughout the Western US and I've had some pretty rad experiences and adventures thanks to this mobile lifestyle. One example of that is while staying in Jackson, Wyoming for a couple months, I grabbed coffee with my biggest inspiration in both photography and real life, Jimmy Chin. And he's actually the reason why I got into outdoor adventure photography. He's like, such a legend so yeah he's actually filming and i'm gonna show him the van <laughs> this place is sick well first of all this is like one of the nicest vans <laughs> i've been in there are a few things i really liked about this van though so i just got a tour i mean this thing, I, I love the little shelf <laughs> <laughs> i do love this the double layered yeah a little secret drawer you keep your sleeping bags in them and they're so soft because they're probably like 800 filled down. So you can just drop this into your bed in my van. Yeah. That is so nice. So Jimmy actually lived in his car for seven years while building his career as a photographer. Um, so not only is he a legend in the filmmaking and photography realm, he's also an OG road lifer. And he's actually building another van right now. So it was cool to show him around mine and chat about some ideas for his upcoming build. Um, and it got me thinking that I should really do an updated fan tour for you guys since it's been two whole years since I moved in. If you watch my first fan tour, then you'll notice I've made some changes and upgrades. So I'll walk you through those um, along with some organization techniques that I use. And I'll also show you some places where I've experienced wear and tear after so much time on the road. So let's jump into it. Welcome to my tiny home on wheels. This is a 2019 Ram Pro Master 1500 high roof 136 wheelbase and I purchased it brand new as an empty cargo van. This entire build was done by Brett and Yulia, formerly known as Gone with the Van. Unfortunately, they're no longer together as a couple, but Brett is still building. You can find him on Instagram here and Yulia started her own wellness company and you can find her here. Um, honestly, they're such down to earth, genuine and very talented people. So I recommend them whatever they happen to be creating. Okay, so I'm gonna start by going over a few of the different materials and structures, types of wood that were used in the build. But if you want something more in depth, go check out the Gone With The Van channel. They still have some YouTube videos up of um, the process and behind the scenes from when they did this build. This entire space that I call home is just 60 square feet. And I guess we'll start in the kitchen with my little planter box. The type of wood used throughout the van is poplar and plywood and the countertops and the tabletop are birch hardwood. The floors are engineered hardwood oak wood floors and the color used throughout the van is vanilla shake. Both the counters and the ceiling were hand painted to create that distressed look. And the van is insulated throughout with Havelock wool and Super R diamond radiant barrier. Here in the kitchen, I have white subway tile as a backsplash and incredibly, this has held up for two whole years of going down crazy bumpy roads and nothing has ever cracked or fallen out. The only thing I will point out is sometimes this caulking needs to be redone and I have redone that a couple of times, um, but you can see it's starting to yellow a little bit and there is some separation there, but I would say overall it's held up so well. Up here I have a little book nook with one of my plants and some journals and my battery pack for the fairy lights, Wicom tablet. Um, there's two layers of books back there, so it's a nice little storage area. This is my Dometic fridge. It is a CRX55 and it runs on DC 12 volt. Um, it's the perfect size for one person. I did remove the freezer compartment up here to make more space for produce, but otherwise it's just everything that I need. And honestly, I don't know how I lived without one when I was in an SUV. Up here, I organize all of my dry goods. Got a mason jar for coffee. I've got these little gray bags for produce. Um, just so I'm always cutting down on plastic and I don't accumulate too much garbage. Um, crackers, pasta, olive oil, that kind of thing. In this cupboard, I keep 
a lot of my dishes and my spices. Everything is pretty much stacked into each other. And when I take it all out, four plates, four bowls, a frying pan and a strainer. Here is my little spice container. Um, I've got salt and pepper, Trader Joe's, everything but bagel, tea, extra coffee grinds. In this little container, I have my coffee filters, which I use with my AeroPress. This is my electric water heater, which I've had since my first van tour and it's super compact it just opens up like that and it runs off of my solar in my last van tour a lot of you guys uh asked specifically about this electric kettle um so i did create some affiliate links and now i just have a page on my website it's christianschaefer.art slash gear i'll include that link in my caption below um, and on that page, you'll find all my recommendations for the stuff I go over in the van tour today, as well as additional road life recommendations, um, photography, camera gear, camping gear, all of that. And if there's something you see in the tour that you don't find on there, just shoot me a message and I'll let you know what it is and where I got it. This is a two burner stove, which I run off of propane and the propane is stored in that cupboard, which I'll get to in just a little bit. In this drawer, I keep my utensils. So a cutting board, smaller cutting board, some towels, um, Ziploc baggies, up here is just bamboo utensils, knives, all that kind of stuff. And, oh, good time to mention these RV latches come in really handy. Um, it connects to this other half in here. And what that does is when I'm driving, it prevents it from coming out. So it's in there nice and snug. And I actually have those latches on these cupboards and drawers as well. I don't have them up top because these actually never open up. Um, they've never been an issue, but the latches do come in really handy for these other cupboards and drawers. Down here in this cabinet, I have my power station and my little bookshelf. <laughs> but everything in the van is solar powered and it runs off of either AC or DC current. On the roof of the van, I have two Renogy solar panels mounted and they're 160 watts each, so 320 watts total. And down here in the cabinet, I have two Battleborn lithium batteries. They're 100 amp hours each, so 200 amp hours total. This Renogy inverter is 3000 watts, which is actually quite powerful. I'm able to curl my hair and charge all of my camera gear and my laptop many, many times over. Also, I have this DC to DC charger installed, which allows my house batteries to charge off of my car battery whenever I'm driving long distances. So throughout the van, there are five 12 volt dimmable light switches, 10 12 volt LED puck lights, five AC outlets, and two USB DC outlets. And down in this cabinet I have these linen storage boxes. In these boxes I just have a variety of stuff like cups. Here's a top for my frying pan. Here's a, another pan, some extra bowls, covers for my storage stuff. This is a little art project that I still haven't gotten around to. And down here is mostly camping stuff, propane gas for camping, an extra one gallon tank as a backup, some water filtration. And this is the cover for my bear bin, which is back there. And next to the bear bin is my propane tank. Right now, I have a one pound propane tank inside of the bear canister because um, I haven't installed the propane gas detector yet. But once I get that installed, I will be using that one full time. Also, side note, the bear canister is super important for when I'm camping off grid and I need a place to store trash outside um, just so that critters won't get into it and so that it won't stink up the van. This white box is prints. Um, since I'm a photographer, I like to keep some of those on hand. And stored next to that is this, which Nathaniel made for me. It fits right in my fan up here so that if I'm at like a rest stop or I'm sleeping at a Walmart, I can block out all the light and have it totally dark in here. Right above the kitchen, I have this Dometic fan, which is great when I'm cooking and also on a hot day, um, has two different settings. So when I open that up and put it on high, open up these side windows here, I get a nice breeze moving all throughout the van. Here is my sink. To turn on the sink, you just hit this switch here. And when it's time to dump my gray water tank, which is mounted underneath the van, I just turn that on. So the water supply for the sink is in this cabinet here, which is really easy access for whenever I need to fill it. And I have two five gallon fresh water tanks and the gray water tank is mounted right underneath the van. Oh, also while we're out here, this is my shoe drawer. 
this cabinet below the sink, I have my trash can. I use these little compostable bags and because it's for compost, um, it really holds in any kind of smells and it's nice and small and compact and it fits perfectly under the sink. Toilet paper, paper towels. Under the sink, I have these cleaning supplies. Um, so like window glass cleaner, static guard, which is actually really helpful when I'm up in mountain towns and there's a lot of dry air. Shoe cleaner, this is wood glue, which I have had to use um, to fix one of these ceiling panels. It came a little loose and this totally fixed it. And then laundry stuff, which I did want to mention, I use True Earth and this is like a year or two supply worth of laundry detergent. Magic erasers, which I use to keep all of the cabinets clean. This. A little plunger for my sink. I have had to use this on several occasions, so it was like two bucks, totally worth it. In the cabinet next door, I have mostly more cleaning supplies, fire spray, dish soap, um, some cleaning supplies, compostable bags that I mentioned for my garbage, it's reusable grocery bags, carbon monoxide alarm, bear spray, candles, a lint roller, this little broom and dustpan, which I use all day long, a handheld clothes steamer. It's nice to steam your shirt or steam your dress so that you don't actually look like you live in your van. In this drawer down here is my toilet. This is a Dometic cassette toilet and I use it for number one only. If you are interested in how one goes number two in a van like this, I did a whole YouTube video on it talking about toilet, shower, and laundry. I'll link it uh, around here campgrounds, cafes, gas stations, grocery stores, the gym, um, libraries, parks, and for the times that I'm out in the middle of nowhere on like BLM or national forest land, I use the bathroom the same way I would if I were out tent camping in the backcountry. I dig. It is really important to note here that not every place is the same. It's super crucial that you read up on leave no trace LNT principles. It's important to leave a place as clean as, if not cleaner than when you found it. This is the method that I use when I'm boondocking. I have one Ziploc baggie for clean baby wipes and one for dirty baby wipes. And if that grosses you out, then you probably shouldn't live in a van. Because even if you have a compostable toilet, like a nature set or a septic hookup, you will be dealing with your on a regular basis. Up in these cabinets, I have all my clothes. So they're in these little gray cubes here and everything is just rolled. So these are all my shirts. You can fit so much more if you just roll your clothes. Like I have an absurd amount of clothing to be honest, but it's no big deal because it all fits. Same on this side, I have more clothing bins and then some shorts and pants and my toiletry bin, which I will show you. Contact solution, deodorant, hairbrush, stuff like that face wash, um, first aid kit, hair stuff. And then this is my easy access bag that I take whenever I'm taking a shower. So it's like toothbrush, contacts, that kind of thing. And here on the side, I keep my mirror. It just opens up like that. And the other cool thing about this mirror is I can fold it and put it up on my cabinet. So it's eye level when I'm getting ready in the morning. And in this drawer, I keep my camera gear, my laptop, stuff like that. Um, I hesitated to show this last time because I didn't have a dual lock system on it, but now I do. So yeah, I'm sure most of you figured it out anyway, <laughs> because I said it was just extra storage. This is the office slash bedroom. Here I have this table that moves in and out on a lagoon mount. Um, and this can be taken off all together and it goes down to create a queen size bed. I got new pillows. These are linen pillowcases. And that might seem like a really small change, but my last pillows were just plain pillows. And these are filled with my sleeping bags, down sleeping bags and down jackets. And that has given me so much more space to work with um, and storage in plain sight and they're decorative. So it's such a genius idea. I cannot take credit for it. Um, one of you actually left a comment on my last fan tour video and suggested that I put like sweaters and blankets in my pillowcases. And that's where I got the idea from. So if any of you out there are living in your car or your vehicle, I highly suggest this hack. It's so amazing. Like this one, I have a zero degree sleeping bag and like four down jackets in here. So yeah, it's pretty incredible how much you can store. The cushions are made of natural latex wrapped in wool and enclosed in organic waterproof jersey cotton to prevent moisture. The exterior fabric is cotton canvas. My cushions are three inch latex and I have a separate one inch latex topper that I roll out on top. This isn't really necessary, but I love it because it prevents any kind of gap in the bedding and adds an extra layer of support. 
To make the bed, I remove the lagoon mount and set it aside, insert the table in the gap between the benches, and move the backrest cushions into the center. When I first moved into the van, I was setting up the bed in office every morning and night, which takes about five minutes to do. But in the past six months or so, I've started changing it every few days. That said, I still would not change this setup if I were to rebuild. I absolutely love having the option of a dedicated desk space or table, lounge, and a bed. Also, I worked out this super lazy option that allows me to have a dedicated desk space here and then a bed here and a day sofa right there. And that works pretty well for times that I'm just in super hyper work mode and I don't wanna bother with changing back and forth. And just for reference, I'm five foot nine and from this end to this end, um, the tightest spot is six feet across. I opted for a linen duvet and sheet set, which was kind of pricey, but totally worth it. It's super soft and also breathable, which is important with the wide range of temperatures you experience living in a van. Underneath each cushion is a window cover, and these have been a new addition to the van. I highly, highly recommend them. They're made by Van Made Gear. And they completely black out the van when I cover up the back windows and the side windows. There's magnets sewn into the lining all the way around, and there's Reflectix sewn into it as well, so it keeps the van both cool and warm, depending on the situation sticks right there and from the outside it's a complete blackout it doesn't let any light out and the cool thing you can also go like that and so you don't have to have additional storage for it under the large cushion here i have the window cover for the side window and it just snaps into place super easy this also rolls up and snaps just like the other ones which is super convenient if you don't want to find storage for it someplace else. I also have these window covers. They have Reflectix sewn into them and they fit snug in my little window sills in the back and so they black out those back windows. With all of these window covers in place and the blackout curtain, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, and the black foam piece for the Dometic fan, it's a complete blackout in here. Like I've turned on the lights and shut the van, walked outside and there isn't any light emitting from the whole van. So coming back to the benches, underneath the cushions, I have bench storage. Here is my down pillow. Here's my duvet cover. It, I store it in a pillowcase so that it will stay nice down there. And then here I have an extra wool blanket, um, sheets, and this is my one inch latex mattress topper. Under this large cushion, I have access to these three different compartments, which I can also access from the back doors. This door right here is where I keep all of my camping supplies. Um, I have an extra tripod, I have a tent, um, I have my drone and my first aid kit, stuff like that down there. I also have this solar shower, which it's just a black bag and you fill it up with water like from a stream or a lake and you can lay it in the sun and then use it as a shower and just like hang it. So that's a pretty neat addition. In this little door, I keep my hiking boots and my running shoes. And on this side, I have most of my linens, which I showed you earlier. And then here on the door is my Wii Boost. What this does is it amplifies my cell signal. So if I head out to the boonies or BLM or National Forest and I only have one or two bars of LTE, there is an interior antenna. And then there's also an antenna mounted on the top of the van that will boost my signal and allow me to work in remote locations. Here's where I have the internal antenna for the Wii Boost. And whenever I want a stronger internet connection, I just, plug in to DC volt so it doesn't require very much power. And yeah, it boosts my signal. And these hat hooks are new additions. Um, I can't believe I didn't have them before. It was just wasted space. And it was such a inexpensive upgrade. In this compartment, my suitcase for plane travel, which hasn't happened much lately, but hopefully soon. I have a ridiculous amount of shoes in this van, which one day I'll show you when I'm doing a walk through my wardrobe. It's kind of embarrassing how many shoes I have. This is Flozyme, which are enzymes that I put down my sink every once in a while to keep it from smelling. And I have my leveling blocks down there, which are great for getting the van nice and flat. And in this compartment here, I have a lot of miscellaneous things. I have three of these storage bags and I find them really handy. I can throw dresses and sweaters and just additional clothing in them and they stack really well inside of these benches. I have additional toiletries, which I probably don't need, but you know, like a hair straightener and a year supply of contacts, that's important. I could probably live without this stuff, but I have space for it. So yeah, 
that lives down here, which is a bunch of other random stuff. Another place where I have lots of storage is this overhead storage compartment here. It goes all the way up to the windshield and I can fit so many jackets and technical gear. Um, during the off season, my backpacking bag, which is currently living in my front seat, easily fits back there in the corner. Um, I have climbing gear, just all kinds of stuff up there. I've also started using this overhead storage bin for towels for the beach, um, little bags for, you know, like knickknacks. I have my covers there, another down jacket. Here's another van life essential, the walkie talkies. Like when I'm traveling with a caravan or with friends and there's no um, service, these are great to stay in touch. These are sand cloud towels and I have two of them up there and I absolutely love them. They repel sand. So if you take them to a beach, you can lay them out and then just shake them and they're good to go. So they're really road life friendly. This is my gym bag on a carabiner. And down here, I keep my camera bag. So my shower bag isn't really anything special. I just have this little shower tote um, and I just refill the shampoo and conditioner. This is a quick dry towel, which after I shower, I just hang it on the back of my chair for like, I don't know, a few hours and then it's totally dry. And I also have this compact hair dryer, which is actually ancient. I've had it since I lived in Europe. So it is kind of falling apart, but super handy and easy to travel with. This is the Peak Design Everyday Pack and it stores my drone, all my lenses, two cameras, and my laptop and iPad. So this is what I take into coffee shops whenever I'm going in for a full day's work. Next to the shower bag, I have my hanging laundry bag and this is just a canvas bag that I've had literally since college. My rolled up yoga mat and below I have rain boots because Washington. And here is an ice scraper, a helmet hanging for my bike. Below the driver's seat is a pretty substantial amount of space. And down here, I keep all of my tools. Here's an overview of what I have stored underneath the driver's seat. So I just have some basic tools, windshield repair kit, screwdriver tape, tape measure, um, a wrench kit, and I have caulking for my tile. I have this NOCO Genius Starter, which allows me to jumpstart my vehicle without the help of another car, which is super handy. Spare RV latches, a toolkit for my bike, this 12 volt portable air compressor, which allows me to fill up my tires if they're running a little low on air or also deflate them if I'm gonna be on certain kinds of terrain. Over here, I have a lot of warranty information and instruction manuals. Um, screwdriver set, spare batteries. Here I have my blackout curtain. It's gray on this side and then black on the other side. So if you're looking into the van at night, you're just gonna see black. And I use this magnet to secure it over on this side so that no light gets out. In the front seat right now, since I'm filming, I have my guitar, which guys, I'm still not any good at playing it, but I try. <laughs> I finally have calluses on my fingers, so that counts for something, right? But um, typically I would store it right behind my passenger seat, but since I got the bike, I now just put it in the back um, on one of the cushions under a pillow when I'm driving and it stays there just fine. But seriously, I promise, one day I'm gonna play a Ben Howard song for you guys. It might be terrible, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> in this corner, it used to be a giant styrofoam piece and I got bored one day and ripped it out. So, I don't know what that was. This is what I keep in there now. It is a rolled towel and I love it. In my passenger seat, I mentioned this briefly earlier, but during hiking season, which is like all of summer and most of fall, I have my backpack always fully packed with like a sleeping bag, sleeping mat, pillow. Um, it's full of three liters of water, everything I need so that when I roll up to a campsite and I wanna go for a hike, it's just ready to go. Beneath the passenger seat is one of the newest additions to the van, an S-Bar petrol heater along with a 12 volt power temperature monitor. I spent the first two and a half years on the road without a heater, so this has been a huge upgrade for me. This is the high altitude model, which means it can function in high elevations. You can find the exact link to it on my gear page. It draws gas from my van's fuel tank, so I don't need to hook up a separate fuel source to keep it going and the exhaust pipe is mounted beneath the van. It's extremely efficient. Every time I've used it, I haven't even noticed the fuel gauge dropping at all when I start the engine. Also, the passenger seat has a swivel package. I can swivel this around and kick up and have an extra place to hang out or have an extra seat for friends in the van. I have a folding e-bike and it lives right behind that passenger seat. Um, it does take up a lot of space. I haven't decided if I'm gonna keep it in there um, throughout the winter months when I wanna use the heater, but we'll see. I might get a mount for it on the bike. I absolutely love the bike, so I am 
really just putting up with how much space it takes up because I think it's worth it. When I roll up to a campsite, I take it out and unfold it and lock it up behind the van. So I got a U-lock that connects to the van down here and then I have this lock here. So it's locked up pretty good, it's accessible and gives me a lot more space inside the van. When I bought the van, it came with some pretty small factory wheels and tires. And I was reluctant about switching them out because, I don't know, I just hated the idea of wasting perfectly good tires. But after a year and a half, I finally opted for an upgrade from the awesome team over at Landed Gear in San Diego. They custom cut the rear wheel well to fit new BF Goodrich 245 KO2 tires and new wheels and rims. They also added their flagship tire mount here in the back and swapped out the factory suspension for sumo suspension springs. This allowed for a little more ground clearance and a much smoother ride down bumpy forest roads. Here in the passenger front seat, I am typically storing firewood and a hatchet and yet another pair of shoes. Um, here on the side door, I keep a lot of day packs, my packable shovel. And this is something that I use really often when I'm out in national forests or BLM land. On the driver's side, I just have more storage. So in here I have wasp spray and a fire extinguishing spray. Um, I have a U-lock for my bike, mosquito screens for my sliding door, my back doors, and my side doors. Compartment up here. I have an additional inverter, headlamp, and car fresheners. Gotta keep that fresh, fresh. Here in the front seat, under the visor, I have this folding mirror which is super handy when I want to do my makeup up in the front seat with natural light with my little co-pilot plant and my dream catcher that I got in the Grand Canyon. Another small storage hack that I use is I have these little brass shower curtain rings and I just put them on the back of my seats here and then I can hang a jacket or sweater or a little backpack. And also I use hair ties for rolling up technical gear or bags like this day pack that I use. I can roll it up and use a hair tie and then it stores really easily. Overall, I'm really happy with how the van has held up over the past two years. As far as wear and tear goes, there are some parts in the van where some cracks are starting to show and I probably need to sand them down and repaint them. Um, and this table right here, depending on what environment I'm in, it can warp pretty significantly. But now that I'm back in Washington, it seems to be flattening out a bit, which I like. Um, the same goes with this cutting board. This can warp so much, it, it'll be like practically bowed. But if I get back into a human environment, it'll go flat again. Some of the counters have a bit of wear and tear um, just from being used all the time. And the floor definitely has some scratches. Like I mentioned before, one of these um, ceiling slats did come down, but I was able to fix that with wood glue, so no big deal there. Behind the fridge, there is some warped and cracked paint. So I do think that maybe I have some water leaking at times where there's a lot of moisture. So that's one thing that I probably need to get fixed. Those little black RV latches that I use on the cabinets and drawers that I showed you, those have all broken at least once. So I keep those on hand. And oh, one other common question I get is, do I feel like I have enough power or have I ever run out of power? And I did once. I fell asleep with an electric blanket plugged into the AC all night so the inverter was on and I woke up to my lights being out. So that was my fault. Um, apart from that, I've never even come close to running out of power. Between my 320 solar watts and the DC to DC charger, I have more than enough power. All right, so that's about it. Um, thank you so much for watching this tour. I know it was really long, but if you have any additional questions or comments, um, just leave them in the comment section below. I always love hearing from you guys. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in anything that I talked about in this tour, check out my link, christianshafer.art slash gear. That's where I have all my recommendations and affiliate links listed for the products in this van. And whenever you use those links, I get a small kickback and it keeps me out here creating. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're interested in travel, photography, or van life. Um, I post irregularly, but I'm working on that. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for being here and I'll see you out on that open road.